Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at Obsidian, an awesome app that helps you take notes in classes. So let's get started. This is what it sort of looks like, and as you can see it's great because you can just take notes for class. This is my physics notebook right now, and as you can see we have different equations, you can write down different notes, and it's sort of in this like file system over here. And it's really similar to other note-taking apps like Notion, but what I like about Obsidian is you make a note and then you decide where it goes, right? In Notion, you have sort of like file systems in which everything is in a nested folder and then you sort of have a structure that way. Whereas in Obsidian, things are linked through what's called backlinks, right? And you can see I have this like physics notebook, and everything is just linked together in this really neat way that helps you see where different ideas and terms go, right? So this is called a graph view in Obsidian, and as you can see, I can click on something like, let's say, uh, force, right? And oh, that's a pretty basic note, but it's linked to a lot of different notes. If we take a look at something like a uh, wave reflection or maybe the Doppler effect, let's say, right? We can have different equations, we can have different things, and then you can see we can also click on links to go to other pages. And it's just a really neat way to organize your notes for classes. So I'll put a link down to the install page for Obsidian, but once you have that installed, you should get to something like this if you open up the app. Now what we want to do is we want to create a new vault. And just click on that button, and it'll ask you for a vault name. Let's name ours YouTube. All right, and then we can pick a location. I'm just gonna go to my YouTube folder and just make a new folder called Obsidian. Create. All right, so now let's open this folder and create our vault. And it'll take a bit, and you'll get dropped into something that looks like this. Now, let's take a look at what we have here, right? This is where our main text editor is and how we're going to be writing our notes. As you can see over here, we can make a new note, we can make a new folder, and we can do some other cool stuff. We have something called a daily note, which if you enter journaling, you can actually write daily journals, right? And I have a separate journal app, so I don't really use this feature, but it's nice if you want to check it out. We have templates, which are really nice, command palette, which I'll get into later. This is extremely useful, the command palette. We also have new canvas, a uh, gra graph view, which is what I showed you earlier, and quick switcher. All right, so let's just create a new file for now. And we'll name it first, or first note, let's say. All right, and as you can see, we're, we get this blank page. And if we just start typing, uh, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, right? You you can see it's just you can just basically take basic notes this way, right? But you might be wondering how I made these different formats, and that's a good question. Obsidian is actually really cool because it's based on this language called Markdown, and Markdown is this really easy way to format pages, right? You'll see, in a, you'll see it used in a lot of like blog posts, or if you use apps like Reddit or Discord, they have built-in markdown formatting, right? So let's delete this real quick. And then let's just get started with the basics. To make a heading in markdown, right, you can use the pound symbol, right? So we're gonna say pound, and this is gonna be our heading one, right? And you can have different ideas this way, and you'll see how heading one is this really huge text, right? If we do two pound symbols, right, it'll be a smaller heading. If we do three, it's going to be an even smaller heading still, right? And you can use a bunch of pound symbols, and you can just nest those down as you wish. So you can make different headings like this, and as you can see here, I have like a heading called intensity, a, a smaller heading called decibels, and if we just take a look at this, you can see it's just the basic pound symbols. All right, let's see what else there is to use. We can do different text formattings, right? And the two most basic ones are bold and uh, bold and italicized. 
To make bold text, what you want to do is you want to write text and you want to surround it with two two of these asterisks, right? So we can write bold text by surrounding it with two asterisks, and this is and we can compare uh, this with normal text. So as you can see, I don't know if it'll, it comes off really well in video, but this text is bold, right? And to do italics, instead of having two bold symbols, we only use one, right? So this is italic. And as you can see, we can make bold text and we can make italic text. Great. Now let's move on. We can write equations using these dollar signs, right? So if I want to write an equation, what I can do is, using two dollar signs, we can put our equation inside. So let's say uh, delta, delta x equals um, v initial t plus one half at squared, right? And if you're unfamiliar with this, this is just a uh, LaTeX, right? It's like the math, the math programming language, if you wish. And yeah, that's this basic LaTeX. And we can write inline equations by just using one dollar sign. And make sure you don't put a space in between the dollar sign and your text. So we can say uh, velocity equals um, distance times time. Great. And as you can see, we can type equations this way. Let's see what else there is to use. We can make quotes, and I usually like to use quotes to sort of like give a description of what it is, right? So if, you, if we go to diffraction, we can see that diffraction is the bending of a wave around an edge. And when I format it this way, you can see that it's sort of this like box, right? It makes it pop out in a page. And to do that, you put a greater than symbol and you start typing, right? And as you can see, uh, this is a quote. And you might be wondering how I'm switching between these two modes. If you press Control E, it jumps you out of editing mode and it brings you into reading mode. In reading mode, you can't edit anything, you can't type anything, but it makes it easy to read the text, right? So Control E, and that gives you editing and uh, reading mode, right? Uh, let's see what else there is. Oh, huge thing about Obsidian is the links, and the links are really great because they basically connect different notes, right? As we can see, if I hover over this light link, it gives me a small pop-up that shows me what light is, right? And it's sort of like this built-in note, right? <laughs> and you can even nest a lot of links over here, and it's pretty cool. So how you would do that, oh, actually, if you click it, you would get brought over to the node, right? Pretty basic. So how you do that is actually quite simple. Let's make a second note, uh, and we'll title a second note. All right, so we have first note and the second note. Let's say in the second note, I wanted to make a reference to the first note. Maybe I have something in here that I want to include in the second note, right? What I can do is I can type, this is a link to the first note. And instead of just typing this text directly, we can surround the title of the note with two square brackets. And what you can see is it gives me this link. And when I click on that link, it brings me right over to the first note. And this is extremely useful because what you can see is now if I go over to the left, and I click open graph view, it makes this link between the two notes. And even if I go over to the first note, you can head over to this right side where this, there is this expand button. And as you can see, we have linked mentions, and we see, oh look, the second note has a backlink to the first note. Right? And this is this is one of the key features of Obsidian that I really like. The fact that you can easily uh, you can easily link between notes, right? And I think that might be all for the stuff, like mainly the text stuff in Obsidian. Uh, oh, a pretty nice thing to have <laughs> is uh, lists, right? I forgot to add this. But how you would make a list 
is you would just put a dash, right? It's as simple as that. Just dash, and then you just start typing. So uh, we can say element one, and then if you hit enter, it just automatically fills in the rest of the list, right? So element two, element three, right? And yeah, these are basically all the things you need to start writing notes, right? You can write different headings to highlight different parts of text. You can use bold and italic to uh, just make parts of text pop out. You can use uh, these dollar signs to write equations if you're taking notes for like a math class or a physics class. You can use the greater than symbol to make a quote, and you can use the dash symbol to make lists. One final thing I'll say is, as you can see right here, I have different notebooks. And if you go to the graph view, you can see I have this huge physics dot, right? And this physics dot is connected to all of the different dots. And how I did that was in every note that was related to physics, I would give it a physics heading. Right? Oh, or a physics. Oh, wait, no, it's called a tag. That's what it's called. So, oh, I don't know what I did there. All right. So at the at the top of each note, what I do is I put a tag for the notebook that it belongs to. And how you do a tag is you put the pound symbol, but instead of putting a space afterwards, you would just put no space. And then let's say this is for YouTube, right? As you can see, instead of making it a heading, if you don't if you don't put any spaces next to the pound symbol, it turns it into a tag. And if I if I open up, what did I do here? Oh, there we go, yeah. If I open up the second note, you can see that I can put YouTube as a tag also. And now let's head on to graph view, right? We can see that nothing is showing up, but if I go over to display, uh, not display, if we go over to filters, we can click tags and this YouTube tag pops up. And it just shows us that these two notes are connected to YouTube. And it's pretty cool. So that's about it for the basic functionality of Obsidian. Now, there's some extended functionality functionalities you can add by using plugins. And what you can do is you can open up this settings cog right here. So if you click on settings right here, you can see there's a lot of settings. And yeah, let's just talk about some of these settings real quick. Uh, I don't really worry about a lot of these, but there is this really nice thing called Vim key bindings. If any of you nudes out there, just like me, use Vim, it's pretty cool. So you would have to type in the command for exiting Vim, and you can say, let me enable Vim, right? And then with Vim key bindings, one of my favorite, favorite things about Obsidian, you can use Vim inside of Obsidian. How great is that? You can, you can delete text, you can insert, Right, you can escape, and yeah. So Vim mode, highly recommend if you're into Vim. And there's a lot of really cool stuff in here. You can turn on the spell checker, which is pretty good. And yeah. So on to plugins. Right. So there are some pretty nice plugins that I recommend you get. So we have core plugins right here, but we have something called community plugins. And it asks you to make sure that restricted mode is turned on or turned off, I guess. Right. And we can uh, we can browse community plugins. And here you can install different plugins that people have written for Obsidian. And a lot of them are really cool. Let's see which ones I have. All right, so uh, I have language tool, which is sort of like a grammar uh, checker. I have something called Obsidian Git, and if you want to back up your files in the cloud, there's one downside to Obsidian, which is that it doesn't have its own cloud server unless you get the premium version. But what I found is that it's really easy to just set up a Git, uh, a Git project, and then just input all the files inside. So with this Obsidian Git plugin, as you can see right here, I can commit and push changes straight to a Git repo, and then I can sync it on the cloud, and I just host it on GitHub. There's also style settings, and you might be thinking that, like, 
My obsidian looks a lot different than this one. That's because I like to use this color scheme called Capuchin. And basically, if you go over to Community Plugins, and then you click Browse, let's search up Cat. Is it not? Uh, over here. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I just installed it through here, right? So if you go, if you go over to appearance, and then uh, you click on manage, I use the Capuchin theme, right? So you can just click on this, and then you can install and use. So yeah, that's about it for Obsidian. I find this to be a really great app. Highly recommend for any of my fellow students out there. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Peace.